24. Yep. Let me switch this to that. Okay. So number 24. Got time? Maybe we got to do maybe two or three more. So anybody else? I got 24. Anybody else get one wrong? You're not sure what you did? That's the kind 16. Okay. Anybody else? Take about two more. Did you have to do 27? Uh, yeah, you had to do 27. 47? Nope. I just said 46. David? 9? Is that you said 9? Okay. All right, here we go. Let's do these, and if we have time, we can do some more. But let's just do these for right now. All right, number 9. 0.75 kilograms. All right, and we want to change that to milligrams. Now watch, I'm not going to, if you look at your list of all the conversions, I don't think they have kilograms to milligrams, do they? But you could go, what is on the list? Kilograms to what? Just plain old grams, right. So watch, I could put kilograms here and put grams right there. And then, what's that? Use meters? You can't, I mean, this is how I've been, this is how I do it. Okay, I think this is a good way to do it. Watch, one kilogram, and how many grams is one kilogram? It's a thousand, okay? Make sense so far? But I'm not done though, am I? Because it says to change to what? Milligrams, all right? I didn't write that on there, but it says to change to milligrams. So watch, oh, wait a minute. Oh yeah, that's right, I almost didn't see that K right there. I thought, wait a minute, I put grams there. So kilograms cancels with this kilograms. Now I've got grams. What am I going to do to that? Put grams down here so they cancel out, right? What am I going to put up here? Milligrams, right. And it's a thousand milligrams equals one gram. You follow? So now, so I had to do it twice. It's not just one conversion. I had to do two of them to get it to go from kilograms all the way to milligrams. Now look what I have. I got 0 0.75 times a thousand times a thousand, which is, yeah. Now watch, it's a thousand and a thousand. How many zeros here? Six. Six zeros. There's three here and three here. So there's six all together, right? So if I multiply by six zeros or one and six zeros, really all I got to do to my decimal is do what to it? Move it how many places? Six places. So if I move it, watch, here's 0.75. And let's put, watch, six places. One, two, three, four, five, six, right there. So that's where your decimal is now. There's your 750,000. You see that? There's the comma. So 750,000. Does that make sense? So you moved it six places because you had six zeros. So you moved it two just to get to here, and then you got four more zeros you got to stick on the end. We good with that? All right. Uh, let's do 16. 16 is one of those evaluate problems. It's 6x minus z. And you got to know what x and z are equal to, right? And they tell you x is 2, and z is what? 4. All right, no negatives or anything here, is there? So let's just plug and chug, right? Plug that stuff in, all right? Is that funny? It's kind of funny. You'll get used to it. Watch, put the 2 in for the x, right? Because it's 6 times 2 minus whatever the z is. What's the z? It's 4. What's 6, minus, or six times 2? 12 minus 4 is 8. Simple. That wasn't even tricky at all, was it? Where'd we go wrong on that one? I don't know. That was one of the easier ones, I think. Well, let's do 24. Let's take a look. Where's 24? There it is. Oh, we did this one in the other class. Must be a popular question. Yep, that's all you do. Because look, multiply by the reciprocal. Remember doing that? When you, when you uh, have a fraction that's being multiplied by your variable, Multiply by reciprocals. So you put the 14 on top, 4 on the bottom. That way is the 14's cancel and the 4's cancel, right? So if I do that to this side, what am I going to have to do over here? Same thing. Same exact thing. 14 over 4. What am I going to put that 18 over? 1. One. Good. Watch. The 14's go. The 4's go. M equals. Now, are you going to go 18 times 14? No. Let's try this without a calculator. I'm not saying that you can't use a calculator. Okay, you can use one if you want to, but watch. It's much more fun if we do this by ourselves, isn't it? Watch. How many 
4 goes into 14, right? Or, or what goes into both of these? 2 does. 2 goes into that twice, and 2 goes into that, what, 7 times. Are we done canceling? No. 2 also goes into 18, doesn't it? All right, so 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 18, what, 9 times. All right, now look what we have. Everything's over 1, so I just have 9 times what? 7. What's 9 times 7? 63. Look at that. Isn't that much more fun than putting that into a calculator? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Come on. Play along. It is, right? Yes, much more fun. Thank you. All right, there we go. we got a couple minutes. Let's do another one. It's got to be something else. Huh? Are you just saying that? We didn't even have to do number one. 20? So you're just saying stuff. Number 20, let's do this. This is uh, one of those evaluate deals again. Y plus 2X over 10Z. All right, here we go. Watch. Uh, X is 2. Z is 4. What, what was Y? It's negative 3. So I'll just, I already wrote those down over here earlier, so I'll just use this. So let's plug and chug, right? Plug the stuff in. So it's a negative 3 plus 2 times X, which is a 2. And that thing is over 10 times Z, which is 4. All right, let's see what we have. Watch, I'm going to keep the negative 3. Do the multiplication first, okay? You always do the multiplication first. 2 times 2, four. so it's a plus 4. And that whole thing is over what? 40. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1 over 40. And that's all you do. Just leave it like that. Don't change it to a decimal. Just keep it just like that. Are we good? Say what? We're on YouTube. Yes, we are. Now look, if there's a, if you want, go back to that other class, a fourth period CP class, and look to see what we did today. Basically, it's just all this stuff, except I did a few different problems. All right, so that'll that'll help you. I forget exactly which ones they are, but you can look at it. Um, I think this was a repeat right here, 24. But um, there's probably three or four problems that we did in the last class we didn't do in here. So if you want to go back and look at it. You can look at those to see how to do those problems. Okay, that that worksheet's due tomorrow. I'm going to collect it before we take our test tomorrow, okay? Remember to go over it, make sure you get the right answers, and then um, you'll be ready for the test. Is the test going to look a lot like this paper? It'll look a lot like this paper. The test is going to cover the same style of problems. Maybe not exactly. Sit. I didn't say to stand and leave. Okay, the bell's not rung yet. Wait till the bell rings, then you can go. All right, so the problems will look very similar to this, just the numbers will be different, okay? All right, but it'll look really, really close to this. All right, good luck tomorrow.